Hello, I'm David Wormsey. In this video, I'm sharing some fancy headings that I've made using the Beaver Builder heading module and some CSS. And it's a collection that's available as a template as part of my Beaver Junction plugin, which is free to download. But if you don't want to do that, then I will make the CSS available on this page. So let's have a look at the collection as it is at the moment. A lot of this is experimental because it's using some clipping. So we are clipping the text with a background image here. And we've got the same here with some transparency. We've got the same also with some effects that are behind using a background and we're clipping the text here and here. So one thing to note about these is that they're only going to work on the modern browsers. It probably on average, maybe about three to 5% of people won't see the effect as you expect to see it, but maybe that's not a problem. And there are other things in here that I commonly use, which will work on all browsers where I want to split up the styles here within the one header or have a background. Okay, so for the rest of this, I'm going to show you this on my site, my dummy site that's got a light version of Beaver Builder. And obviously I've got my plugin and template installed. So if I go over to custom rows, it's alphabetical and here's fancy headings. If you downloaded this earlier, then you might want to upload the plugin again because this is fairly new to it and also over time, you'll see that I'll be changing some of the content here. So I'll be adding to it more likely than taking anything away, but I may change some of the code as things are pointed out to me. Okay, and what I've done and what I typically do is that I will put the CSS in the individual modules so you can see them on their own, but you may want to take those out. And to do that, all you need to do is to put your own custom selector before each of the roles and then add that into wherever you want them to show by adding the class in there. In the future, and this may have changed by the time you're watching this video, I may have included some classes to go with all of these as I try and make my plugin more of a kind of system for making all sites. I might include that, but I haven't quite sorted that out yet. Okay, let me talk about the first one. And here's a th thing to mention here. Uh, with a lot of these effects, when you go into them here, they kind of disappear until you've either saved or refreshed the page. You might need to refresh in this particular case. So let me just refresh you on which one we're looking at. So it's this first one. Now, this is kind of my favorite, this fixed background with the clipped text over the top. But there is a big caveat with this one. Um, not only does it not work on the old browsers, it also doesn't show in the same way with Firefox in this case. And the rest of the effects are fine with Firefox, but this one, because we're using the fixed, it seems to, for some reason, unless someone knows another way, it takes the, the whole text as fixed as well as the image. So the effect in Firefox is more similar to the a second effect over here, except that the text is fixed and will move. OK, so let me quickly explain this. Otherwise, no, it works on the Chromium browsers and Safari, the latest one. And the Edge now is a Chromium browser, so it works on those. Um, we are using a something which isn't part of the official uh, CSS spec as such. It's got a prefix of WebKit here on this one. And we're using this background clip to text. So we're clipping the text itself. And we are making then the fill for that color transparent so we can see what is behind it, which is a background in this case, which is an image. And the rest here I've just put in in case you need to move around your images. These are the different settings you can have. So you can repeat the image if it's a small one that wants to repeat over and over on the text. And you've got your options there. And this is just set to auto. So you can have it to no repeat there for the size there. Uh, you might want to set to cover so it covers the element area, the entire module content. So that's really there if you need it. Let me just quickly, this is a bit awkward to work with having to put backgrounds, but how I would probably do it is, let me just remove this one, is that I would just open up the media library separate and put in the image that I want. And now you can just click on that and copy the URL. So it's not such a big job just to go in there and paste this in. And now if I save, hopefully 
yeah it has it's showing the image as it is so i might want to do some adjustments one other thing while i'm in here i might as well just mention that you don't necessarily if you're putting it into your library and it's going to be on your domain as such then you don't need to put in all of this you can just really have it start from forward slash wp dash content and that should work okay uh, still there okay i don't need to cover this because it's really the same without the fixed positioning so you should be able to work this out uh let's go into this one now this is doing a different thing again it's more experimental it's using webkit if you're familiar with vectors you'll you'll understand the concept of having kind of strokes and fills we're using fill color above here and it's again set to transparent so all we're doing here with this one is that on the stroke i've got four pixels and they're white and you can change that to whatever you like another thing to note on this i haven't used it elsewhere but there is a thing called at supports which is a little bit like at media so the browser reads it and decides what rules to apply depending on what it sees so if it supports the, the property that we've got here and the value that I've put in, then it will display this. So if it supports that, the browser does. If not, it will ignore the rule. Perhaps not essential. Perhaps it will just fall back anyway to the color that I've set for this particular font anyway for the heading there. Okay. Next one, again, it's more experimentation again. It's just something I thought was quite cool that is from uh, w3 schools let me just show you the example here so there's a link to it uh, here it says it doesn't work on the edge but it's out of date because the new versions are chromium so it works on newer versions of the edge i think from uh, number 15 onwards i'm not sure but the one limitation of this one because it's using some blending of colors it only works best when your text is black so it blends so it sees entirely through the background and the background for it is entirely white um yeah i mean you can try out variations but that's effectively what we've got we've got this on white and we've got maximum uh, opacity so it's entirely white there and then we've got the blend and this really needs to to get it to be fully transparent then you want to have this black i mean i think if you go to a gray yeah it just dies out so you want full black to be able to see the effect best okay next one something i need more often so this is what we're doing here i'm about to just show you that we're adding in the emphasis here uh, opening and closing tags around the bit that we are styling now you don't necessarily need to add this manually is this going to work for me let's just see yes you can do you can get to emphasis by just clicking on this and it's going to add it in so if i just move my cursor around you can see that's taken the effect so that's one way of adding that in and then what we're doing here is we are just styling that emphasis over here so it's a background color and i've set the font size to normal because we've selected the eye for italicize and we generally that's the styling that's going to happen in your theme or your browser will do it um, and we don't want that we want it to say straight so i've left that as normal there we are that's pretty much that one same thing is going on with the next one except that i'm adding a font family and it has to be of course one that you're already calling onto your page so it needs to be there but if not then you could use one of the web safe fonts there so i'll put a link there which is what i'm doing over here hopefully the rest will make sense okay and the next one here I'm putting a span tag here. You don't necessarily need to do that. So I manually will need to do this to put the background in and I'm styling, just putting a background and I'm putting some padding and a little bit of radius, which you can't see just to take the edge off, off the background. Um, you could get away with the, forgetting the span tag and then just using the dot fl dash module dash content over here and get with the span get with the span from there um it's just that the span is working around the text where the whole module is taking the whole of the module so it might it depends how it's going to work best for you okay let's move that down we're taking the same concept as here but just mixing it again with the selecting the ems uh we're doing more clipping here but instead of a background image let's just do it we are using 
a gradient here. And <laughs> this is my little recommendation. Maybe you know of another generator, but I mean, you can just waste hours of your life um, playing around with this. You can just add in more stops and, and create all sorts of effects and change the, the direction or the type of gradient that you want. And then all you need to do is to copy and paste this. It gives you the fallback background color in case the gradient isn't supported with the older browsers. And then all you need to do is to just swap this section out and leave the clip in here. So you can create all sorts of things. Um, I've included another one here, which is um, from CSS Tricks and a link to it. I just thought it was quite nice. So it's using a kind of a radial gradient on this one. Um, nicely done, I thought. You can't see it now, just change that. And this is exactly the same thing. Let me just go into here. There's a tutorial with this one. So you can do some really clever things with your gradients here. You could do the same thing in here by just kind of budging things up to each other. Uh, we're on the wrong settings here, so um, we have to adjust Huh. So we get a hard color here and we can do those lots of different by moving them close up. We can get this hard edge and that's exactly what she has done. I think it's a she on the effect here, which you can't see now because every time I go in there. But let me just show you the effect is here, there, and she's got it at a slight angle, which you can change. So you can try that out for yourself. The next one, again, is that it's pretty much, it's all the same kind of idea here. I'm using linear gradient. What I've done is to get those colors to edge up so they're sharp, is I've put, it has to add up to 100%, but we've got 70% here is transparent of what's allowed on there. We're using the EMs again to emphasize this. And then the rest of it is the yellow and you can change that to whatever color you like and 30%. Uh, so it's 30% of the available space here as it's, as it's running down on there is showing the yellow. So we can have it much thicker or much thinner by just adjusting these. So I could go to 80, 20 and just have it a little thinner. Okay, next thing here, no CSS for this because it's just in line. You can just add the styling inside and just uh, whatever I put a little dot in there um, it's probably better to do external styling so what I've done here is put a class of heading style here around the ampersand and then we are in the advanced section here we've got our style with a color put on it now I've had to use important here because the styling is either in the column or within the module itself. If I've given this a, a color itself, it needs a lot of rules to, to make this more important than the rules before it. So it's a bit of a cheat, not the best of practice, but I've used important here because it's just been used as a one-off. But if you don't need it, you can just remove that. It's not such a big deal. And finally, uh, this isn't a heading module at all. I just threw this in just so you can have a play around. It's a text module where I'm setting the heading two here, I've set a heading four over on this. And nothing about that apart from the fact that I've put inline colors and sizes on this. And what I've done under the advanced tab here is I've used pseudo classes, something I've talked about before to put in content that doesn't exist. So where we've got this word background underneath there, faded, you could change that to something else here. It's really content that's just been added and styled there. And then here I can also style and position my header two and header four. But this is just something for those who want to just play around with these kind of ideas. Okay, I think that's probably enough for this video. I hope this was useful. If it was, then please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks very much for your time today. And I hope to see you in another video. Thanks. Bye.